So I know you've told the story probably before, but let me get a bit of it here. What was Jack Dorsey's pitch? What was Jack's pitch? Well, look, there's obviously a big transformation from particularly the next generation of consumers shifting away from credit to debit. So, you know, what you've seen now in North America, two out of three millennials don't own a credit card anymore. And then when you think about the heritage of Square being about economic empowerment and, as, and more specifically, you know, small businesses on one side of the equation and, you know, Cash App having 70 million annual active consumers, which also plays into that, you know, debit economy. It was a really, you know, strategically uh, complementary marriage. That makes a lot of sense. Now, right now, people are uh, understandably concerned, probably because of how buy now, pay later sounds, right? We're told not to do that. But of yeah. course, we're doing it already with credit cards. How far does that go? What percentage of the U.S. market do you think, uh, in your vision, shifts away from credit cards eventually to buy now, pay later? Yeah, if you, I mean, we, we launched Afterpay in North America just three years ago. We currently account for six and a half percent of all online apparel in the region. And if you compare that to Australia, where we process 15 to 20 percent of all online retail, there's a you know, really, really big opportunity here. You know, most importantly, we did build the product to be the opposite of a traditional finance product. If 100% of people pay back a credit card on time, the model doesn't work. So there was a really great opportunity for us to build this product that is free for the consumer, that means they can use their debit card and get that flexibility with the appropriate checks and balances. And that's why the love exists for the product and why the growth you know, is present. What do you say to people who worry that you're not assessing risk correctly and when the economy inevitably turns down and some people stop paying their bills, buy now, pay later, and after pay are going to get particularly burned? Yeah, look, the, we thought about this from when we designed the product from day one, and there was, you know, a couple of really important points. The first is it's low average order value, short duration, but, but most importantly, the moment someone goes late on one instalment, they can't actually keep shopping until they pay that late payment back. And there's no credit card that stops someone from shopping the moment they're late because then the model simply doesn't work. So there is this great cycle where, you know, over time we're actually engaging with more high quality consumers because we give good people more flexibility and naturally people that uh, go late over time are given, you know, less, less flexibility. So, you know, that, those checks and balances are actually core to the reason why consumers love us as much as they do. Gary Gensler from the SEC is here. Uh, later today. A lot of talk about cryptocurrency right now. Jack Dorsey talks about it a lot. How much does crypto matter to what Afterpay does? Well, it matters a lot now given, you know, <laughs> given Square's um, uh, you know, strategic importance of crypto and we're really excited by that. I think you know, what crypto represents is putting the power back in the consumer's hands. It also you know, is led primarily from the next generation. When you, when you look at you know, this millennial and Gen Z consumer and this movement that is underpinning, you know, crypto or a whole range of other components rolling out through the finance ecosystem, you know, that for us is, is incredibly exciting. And where that gets to, I think the combination of our, of our you know, respective ecosystems creates a great, fram a great framework to bring that to life. In the various markets where you operate, which regulators do you think are doing the best job? Well, look, from day one, we've been, you know, really pro-regulation and it's about building a fit-for-purpose framework. I think that all regions are naturally at different phases. Um, you know, we've been through a lot more in Australia um, and in the US, the framework is pretty well defined. So, you know, from our perspective, it starts with, you know, does this have the consumer's best interest at heart and how do you make sure there's the appropriate, you know, checks and balances and, you know, that, that you know, high net promoter score, the results that we see from a merchant and consumer perspective, I think, play into that conversation.